In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to install LED lights on a snowblower for a John Deere tractor. The specific tractor I'm using is an X500 with a 44 inch snowblower on it, although the larger size snowblowers and even the X350s and other John Deere tractors will be uh, applicable for this as well. So let's get started. There's a few parts that you'll need to pick up in order to do this project, and I've got them listed out here. So first, of course, is the LED lights themselves, and then I chose to do a no-hole installation. So I didn't drill any holes in the snowblower. I was worried about those rusting out eventually, so I chose to use magnetic bases for the lights, so I'll walk you through that. Of course, you'll need some wire. I like to use heat shrink tubing just to keep things clean, especially for uh, use cases like this in the winter. I also got some cable sleeves and then zip ties to clean everything up at the end. And I'll show you how I used all of those parts. Now down below in this video, I have links to each of these. If you want to do it exactly like I've got here, then you'll have the links to get those. And also I have a blog where I walk through and writing step by step that I'll link to this as well. Now that we talked about the parts that you need, we'll talk about some of the tools. You'll want a 10 millimeter wrench, some butt connectors, wire strippers, crimping pliers, and a heat gun or a lighter for some of that shrink tubing that we've talked about. Now once you get all of your parts ready and your tools out, the first step is just to unpackage everything. So these are the lights that I chose and I've got linked below. They're very inexpensive, very bright. I've used them now for a couple of winters with no issues whatsoever, so they work great. And I'll go over the magnetic base for them in just a second. But you want to get these lights out, unpackaged, and ready to go. Now if you've decided to do the magnetic mounts like I've shown, then all you'll want to do is clean off the snowblower, dry it off, and get ready to be able to set the lights and the magnets down. If, on the other hand, you want to drill holes, then now would be the time to do that. And what I would recommend is also cleaning off the snowblower using a Sharpie or something to mark the locations so they're evenly spaced on the top of the snowblower, and then go ahead and drill your holes. But again, I'm not going to show that. I didn't do that. Uh, again, I was worried about them rusting, so I'll just show you the way that I did it, but really everything else would be the same other than the use of the magnets if you decide to drill holes instead. And this is what the magnetic bases look like. They are ready to mount to the lights. They come that way. So if you're using the magnetic bases, go ahead and get them out and ready to go. And they do come with a bracket that can be bolted on the base, and we will want to do that. So use the hex key that came with the base to mount the base to the bracket that should be in the kit and when it's completed it will look like this. Inside the box with the lights is where you will find the mounting hardware for the lights themselves. So you'll find a bracket that goes into what we just mounted to the magnetic base and you'll also find four smaller bolts in there that mount the light to this bracket. You don't want to get those super tight quite yet because you are going to do some adjustments of the LED lights once you mount them to the snowblower to make sure they're at the angle that you want. A couple of tips, if you're using a wrench or a socket, it's 10 millimeters for those. And in case you're wondering what order to put the regular washer and the lock washer on the bolt, it is important and the order is lock washer first, followed by the regular washer as I have shown here. Okay, now you can see what I'm talking about where you've got four smaller bolts. You can see two in this picture. There's two on the other side. That's what allows the light to move up and down in this bracket to adjust the angle. And then you have the larger bolt that comes up that actually attaches to the light itself. So this is what it should look like. Again, don't tighten those four side bolts all the way quite yet. Just hand tighten is fine because you will want to make some adjustments here in a moment. Now that you have both magnetic bases done and you've got the bases connected, go ahead and mount the lights to the bases and it should look like this and then we will be ready to set them on the snowblower next. The reason I did this project was because the headlights on the John Deere tractor just are not sufficient for snowblowing in the middle of the night. And I tried a number of different locations for these LEDs and where I'm showing them here was the best. Uh, even moving the snowblower up and down while I was moving the tractor, these were still great. They gave me exactly the light I was looking for, and I ended up putting them about three inches in from the edge of the snowblower on either side and then centered them on the top of the snowblower from there. So this is where I ended up putting them. Uh, obviously, you can 
put them wherever you think is best for your particular use. But for me, this was the perfect location to be able to get a nice wide area of lighting from both sides of my tractor. Now that we have the lights and magnetic bases sitting on top of the snowblower where we want them, we need to wire them together and wire them to our power supply. So here you see I've got the two lights connected to each other, and then you'll also see a pigtail that's coming from the tractor itself, which is feeding the power and ground to these lights. So the first step is each light has a small pigtail coming out of it with a black wire and a red wire. So what I did is, as you're looking at this on the left-hand side, I used that light to be the main connection to the power supply. And then I extended the wire of the right light all the way across the top of the snowblower and then connected it to the left light and to the power supply. So just to give you a couple of steps here, the first thing I did was I measured from the right light to the left and then cut a set of, or a wire, black and red, that was that length. And then what I did is I used butt connectors to connect the black and the red wire that I had just made to the black and the red wire coming from the right light. So now that that's done, I've got wiring that extends from the right to the left. And then I put all of that in a wiring sleeve. And I also used the heat shrink over the butt connectors just to make sure everything stays watertight and doesn't pull out easily. So you'll want to heat shrink those butt connectors on the right hand side and then cover the whole thing in the braided sheathing that I have got listed. The other thing that I did is I used some zip ties that were connected to small plastic pieces that have 3M double-sided sticky tape on them. And you'll see where I've got the red arrows here that show that. Now, you would think they would come off easily, but they last they've lasted years, uh, amazingly enough. So I would recommend doing this just to keep everything neat and tidy. You don't want a rock or you trying to clean the top of the snowblower off to rip the wiring out. So I did this all the way across the top. And then on the left light, you will have the wiring coming from the light. You also now have the wiring coming from the right light. And you'll need to connect it to the battery and the power supply from the tractor. So the way I did this was I took a butt connector and I, on one side of the butt connector, I put the red wire from the left light and then a wire that goes to the power supply of the tractor and crimped that. And then I took the black wire from the left light and a black wire that I will end up taking to the tractor itself and crimped that. So now I've got the left light and an extra wire that I created that is just still connected to the spool because I'm going to still have to measure the length crimped on one side and then on the other side of those butt connectors is the wiring coming from the right light so that way you've now got the two lights connected together and you've got wires that are in going to end up going into the tractor themselves connected together again you'll want to use the heat shrink tubing over these connectors keeping them in the sheath as well just for extra protection and then you'll be ready to start wiring inside the tractor under the hood next. Now that we have wiring done on the top of the snowblower, the next part is getting the wiring into the tractor so we can turn these lights on. You could do this a number of ways. You could have a separate switch just for these, or you could do what I did, and that is I connected the LED lights on top of the snowblower to my headlights. I just figured when I needed my headlights on, I probably needed these on too and it made it where I didn't need to do a separate switch. So I just tied these lights directly to the wires that feed the headlights in my tractor. This is a picture of under the hood of my tractor before I did any type of wiring work. And you'll see that there's wires that go from the battery. You can't see the battery, but the wires that are coming down along the bottom right hand side in the cable sleeve there are from the battery. And that's what is feeding the headlights with power. So I decided just to tap into that set of wiring to then feed the snowblower LED lights. If you choose to do the wiring like I'm describing where you're connecting it to your headlights, then what I did is I cut a length of wire that went from the lights that we just talked about. So we should have that one set of butt connectors that are going from the two lights on top of the snowblower to the front of the tractor. So I measured a couple of feet of wire and ran it from the snowblower 
to my tractor and I put it in that sheathing and then I just tucked it in through the grill and now it's ready to be connected to the wires to the headlights. So what I did is I cut the two wires going to the headlights, so the positive and ground wire. And then what I did was I spliced it with some connectors. So the wiring would still be going to the headlights, of course, but then I could also connect to it the wiring to my uh, lights on the snowblower. There's a few different ways you can do that as well, but I didn't want it to be hardwired in because obviously when I take my snowblower off my tractor, I don't want to have to cut the wires and rewire it every time. So what I ended up doing is using some quick connect splice connectors that I've got shown here on the screen now. And that way on one end, so the wires coming from the snowblower had the male connectors, and then I had the two female connectors for the red and the black wire inside the tractor so I could just connect or disconnect anytime I wanted to and usually for me I would when it was winter time I'd run these wires through the grill connect them and I would run a zip tie around the grill just to make sure nothing got pulled out uh, and then when it was time to take the snowblower off I would just pull these apart cut the zip tie and I was good to go to take the snowblower off the front of the tractor there, you could hardwire them in if you wanted to. There's all sorts of different ways you could do this, but this is what I ended up doing, and it worked well for me. Now that you have that wiring going to the headlights, the next thing I would do is make sure everything is crimped well. You've got the heat shrink tubing on, and that's one thing that's easy for it to forget. Make sure you put the heat shrink tubing over your wires first, then do the butt connector, and then slide the heat shrink tubing over the butt connectors and heat it up. It's easy and I've done it more than once where I'll butt connect it and then realize that I didn't put the tubing on and I've got to unconnect everything and start over. So make sure you do it in the right order. And now what I would do is make sure those wires are all connected, turn your headlight switch on and make sure that your headlights are working and the lights on the top of the snowblower are working before you do anything else, just in case there's some issue that you need to fix. But you should turn the headlights on now and you should be able to stand back and see all the lights that are on the front of your tractor, both your headlights and the snowblower LED lights. And that's it. Congratulations. You should now have LED lights on your snowblower and hopefully you'll have much safer and more productive snowblowing at night. At this point, I would just clean everything up, make sure things are zip tied and tightened up nicely, and that should be it. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and if you have questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.